Elvis Choi Gum Gong and Harumi Asano star in The Fondling of an Army. Wait, that can't be right. Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Taddeus Kosciusko, and this is my review of Founding of an Army. It's the third, and thankfully final, part of what might be called the Founding Trilogy. It all started in 2009 with The Founding of a Republic. 2011's Beginning of the Great Revival, aka the founding of a party, marked the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese Communist Party. I watched Founding of a Republic in cinemas, and that's why I skipped the founding of the party. Let's face it, we all knew how it was going to end. Founding of an Army is directed by Andrew Lao Wai Kung who directed the original Young and Dangerous movies, as well as Infernal Affairs. He also directed The Park and Legend of the Fist, but now I'm just being mean. Speaking of which, it looks as though Mr. Lau apparently brooked no insolence from his cast, if this photo is anything to go by. The founding of an army is based on several events considered seminal in the history and creation of the People's Liberation Army. If you don't know about those events, I encourage you to read about them. Especially if you watch Founding of an Army, because, like so many other Chinese movies, it assumes that you already know the story and therefore it's not going to tell it to you. It certainly does tell you who everyone in the movie is. Anyone who has any dialogue gets a title card. What they don't get is backstory, or character development, or anything else that would illustrate who they are as human beings and allow the audience to have some kind of emotional connection to the character. But so what? That's not what blockbusters are supposed to do. And it's certainly not what a communist propaganda movie is supposed to do. It's supposed to remind you of the selfless sacrifice of revolutionary martyrs and the need to put the party above everything and everyone else. Except Mao Zedong. You got that gun, use it. I actually enjoy some propaganda movies, if for no other reason than at least they're ideologically honest. I love Super Typhoon, about a mayor who leads his city through a battle against a typhoon that's... really big. It's not really a good movie in any way, but it's entertaining, and they really did try really hard, and I even get the impression that you're not supposed to take it seriously all the time. The same could be said of Choi Hawk's Taking of Tiger Mountain, because that is also a propaganda film. It was released through August 1st Studios, which is part of the media apparatus of the PLA, which, spoiler alert, was founded on August 1st. First, 1927. But The Taking of Tiger Mountain was one of my favorite films of 2015. It really was a propaganda blockbuster, which is what Founding of an Army is obviously trying to be. But The Taking of Tiger Mountain is also a superhero movie that can be read in some ways as a kind of subversive critique. The reason it got away with that, as someone from mainland China explained to me, is that so-called main melody films, read propaganda movies, have portrayed the PLA in such overwrought superhuman ways for so long that something like The Taking of Tiger Mountain doesn't seem outlandish to its native audience the way it would to other people. Founding of an Army, unfortunately, doesn't really have the same kind of energy, verve, or depth. It's basically two hours of communism wow, where people have dialogue that reads more like big character posters than actual human communication. It's the inevitable result of writing a script that reads like a Wikipedia page. He is him, and he does that, and that is why he is doing that, because he is from there, and that is what he will do once he goes to this other place from which he came originally. But it's actually unfair to say it reads like a Wikipedia page. Because, if you know about these things, it probably reads more like a page from the Chinese Encyclopedia, an upcoming new website sponsored by the Chinese government that's going to become more popular in China than Wikipedia could ever hope to be. Or else. It clicks on the Chinese Encyclopedia or it gets the hose again. Would you? But one benefit of writing a script that way is that you can control the narrative much more easily. 
everyone is righteous, except the nationalists, and the people must be liberated, and Mao Zedong likes swimming, and smoking cigarettes. And everyone somehow instinctively knows who Mao Zedong is whenever he walks into a scene, even though he didn't really rise to prominence in the party until the mid-1930s. But when was the last time that truth and history were allowed to intrude on a good story, or in this case, a bad movie? One thing that's historically accurate, I think, is that at this point in history Mao hadn't yet said that women hold up half the sky. And that would explain why the female characters in Founding of an Army do little more than gaze adoringly at men and cry a lot. Now, I'm not sure if Founding of an Army was supposed to be released in 3D, but some of the cinematography makes it seem that way. Some of the visual effects make it look like the movie was supposed to be released in 2002. The opening credits feature a segment that could be described as Toy Story meets the Red Detachment of Women. There's also a short segment involving a battleship that's digitally rendered, but only in the sense that digital rendering is a euphemism for an uncomfortable medical procedure. But now I'm just being mean again. <laughs> But let's face it, getting digitally rendered will do that to you. Speaking of being mean, how good is Founding of an Army? Douban, a website in mainland China that allows people to rate movies, has disabled voting on this film because they don't want other movies to be jealous of everyone who sees it giving it six stars out of five, or one out of five. You figure it out. One criticism of the film that was allowed came from mainland director Ye Da Ying, grandson of PLA general Ye Teng. He took issue with some of the film's casting decisions, saying that many of the male actors were too pretty to be realistic. I actually agree with him, but I can kind of understand why they did this. If you want to appeal to a young audience, you have to give them familiar faces. At the same time, I found quite a few of these actors to be demonstrably less masculine than I'm sure their real-life counterparts were. However, I will say that more than once, I think the filmmakers sincerely did a really good job finding actors who resembled their characters. They even got Taiwanese actors to play nationalists, art reflecting life. Now, obviously, I didn't enjoy this movie very much, but you might. If you do watch this movie, it's definitely going to be better in a cinema than on a laptop. When this film gets released to DVD, someone is going to have to update the link with a description where you could buy a copy of a Blu-ray or a DVD. I don't think it's going to be me, so I'm just putting that out there. And as long as we're talking about spending money, please, please, please click on my Patreon page because YouTube pays me virtually nothing now. And if you want these reviews to continue, I could use a little help and motivation. I really do appreciate the help people give me through Patreon and it means a lot to me. And so if you could just do that for me, I'd be very grateful. If you enjoyed this review, let me know. And if you didn't, ah, let me know. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon, because hopefully the summer drought of films is over.